Microsoft Excel's VLOOKUP function is a very powerful function and one of the most popular sought after functions found within the couple of hundred functions that Excel offers its users. But it's got some limitations to it. I got an excellent question from a student of mine in one of my Udemy courses uh, excelling with Microsoft Excel from beginner to advanced uh, that dealt with VLOOKUP and one of its limitations. Take a look. Open in front of you, I've got an example file. It's called VLOOKUP MATCH 01. Uh, and it's got two worksheets inside of it, VLOOKUP and Master Employee List. Now I've done a little bit of work here to kind of set it up and get it ready to see the limitation that the VLOOKUP function does have. Now I've got first name and last name of a handful of employees here based on this employee ID. Now we can say, okay, employee ID 1054, last name of Smith, first name Howard. Now Smith and Howard came from this worksheet called Master Employee List. If I hop over there, here's 1054, Smith, Howard. Now the VLOOKUP, it's got four little arguments, the pieces of information that it needs from us, the user of the VLOOKUP, in order for Excel to do its job. Uh, if I just bring in a new VLOOKUP here really quick, just so we can see these four little arguments. Here they are. Lookup value, what are you looking for? Table array, where you can look for it? Column index num, what do you, which column value do you want to return once it's found? And range lookup, whether you're looking for the closest thing or the exact match. Now, one of the limitations that the VLOOKUP has deals with the call index num argument. This is the position based on the column number of the data that you want to return uh, once it finds your lookup value. Okay. Let's take a look at that again. This is my lookup value, 1054. Go to this list, look inside this list, look through the first column, find 1054. Once you find it, column index num, return the one, two, three, or fourth, or fifth, or sixth, whichever column we're looking for the column index num. Now here's the limitation with that. Okay, I've already got last name and first name here. What if I go to my master employee list and I change something about this list? Let's say I add another column in between last name and first name. I'm going to go ahead and use my shortcut key, control plus. I've got now got a new column in there because maybe I'm going to do like uh, middle name and I'll start putting those in there. But if I go back to VLOOKUP function, I've now broke the first name. That's a pretty big limitation of the VLOOKUP because it relies on that kind of static value that in this case number three that represents the third column of the first name back on the master employee list. But because I've now shuffled that over and I changed it now to the fourth column by adding that additional column, I've now broke my VLOOKUP which means I now need to put a four in there. Then I've updated that one. Let's update the rest of them here. There we go. I, I fixed it. It's pretty quick to fix, but, but I want to get Excel to be a little more dynamic for us and do the job for us. One of the most powerful features found in regards to using formulas and functions in Excel is called nesting. The ability to take one function and place it with in another function as an argument within another function and get it to be more dynamic. Take a look. I'm going to go ahead and wipe this out here. So I'm going to recreate first name, but I'm also going to introduce the match function into the mix here. The whole purpose of the match function is to find a value in a range of data and return its position back to you. Take a look. I'm going to come over here to match and I'm just going to say equals match. I'm going to open up a parentheses. Now it asks me for three little bits of information. A lookup value, a lookup array, and a match type. So the lookup value is very similar to a VLOOKUP 
what is it that you're looking for? Look up array, where am I going to find this value? And then match type, very similar to the uh, VLOOKUP match type. If we're looking for the exact match, closest thing to it, I think there's a couple of arguments in there. If we actually go into the FX button, we can see this. So it's a number, one, zero, or negative one, indicating which value to return. I'm going to cancel out of there. So I'm going to say, and just to demonstrate this, let's say, okay, I want to find the first name column because it could change, right? It can get shuffled around. So I'm going to grab first name here. That's what I'm looking for, comma. I'm going to go to my master employee list because I'm now looking at the lookup array. And I'm going to grab all my column headers here. Let's just grab those. So I'm saying, hey, Excel, look for first name. Excel's like, okay, great. I'm going to go look for it. But where am I going to find it? Oh, you're going to find it inside this range of cells, comma. Now I get to tell it less than, exact match, or greater than. I'm going to tell it zero or an exact match. All right, I'm going to close my parentheses, hit my enter key, and look at that. Using the match function, look for C2, which is first name, look for it on the master employee list instead of A1 to J1, and find the exact match. It found first name, and it says, oh, I got it. It's in the fourth position. Take a look. One, two, three, and four. Okay. If I add another column here, pushes that over even more, right, which is now inside the E or the fifth column, it updates it. That's now in the fifth position of that data range. Now, that numeric value is something that we can use within the VLOOKUP, specifically within the call index num argument of the VLOOKUP function. Watch this. I'm going to bring my VLOOKUP back. We're going to tell it, look for this value, 1054. Okay, table array, where am I going to find it? We're going to come over here, grab this list here. There it is, comma. Now it's asking about match index num. Remember, before that was number three or number four, or number five, what, whichever column first name was found within. Well, we, we're trying to make this more dynamic. So now I'm going to bring match. I'm going to just type this in. I'm going to say match. We're looking at the match function. First thing it wants to know is what is it looking for? So in this case, I'm going to go back to this worksheet. Don't really need the worksheet reference. So I'm just going to say, uh, get first name here, comma, look up array. Well, where's it going to find it? So I'm going to hop back here. It's going to look inside the first row, comma. We're going to do zero for the exact match. And I'm going to close the match function. Match, look for C2 on the VLOOKUP function worksheet, comma, find it inside of B1 through K1 of the master employee list. That should actually be A1. Let's just change that. I want to include the entire columns up, so up there. And then zero for the exact match. Now I'm done with the match function, but I'm not done with VLOOKUP yet. So I'm going to do comma again and say false. We're looking for the exact match. Uh, as far as the numeric values here. So I hit my enter key, and there's Howard. I copy that down. There's all the first names. That looks good. Oh, I got a little bit of an issue inside there. What's happening? Uh, I'm going to go back to my first one, and I'm going to make my ranges here. Make them absolute. Make that one absolute. If we don't make them absolute, they get offset, and they move around on us when we copy the cells down. Let's make sure I'm all good there. Oh, this one here should be absolute. All right, that looks good. So let's copy that back down again. There we go. Howard, Joe, Gail, Cheryl, Kendrick, Mark, and so on, all the way down. So now if I go back to the ma master employee list, and let's say I delete a column. Let's get rid of that empty column I put in there. So the first name just moved. So I go back, and it still works in the fourth position. Let's go get rid of the middle name. I don't need that anymore. Let's delete that. And it should still work for us. And there's the number three. So by making something a little more dynamic, 
by utilizing this technique called nesting, nesting of functions, we can create much more dynamic functions, much more dynamic formulas, and get Excel to really do the work for you. It's awesome. I love it. Anytime I can get Excel to do the work and automate the process for me, I'm game. Right? Less work on my part, get Excel to do it for you. You make updates to the master employee list now, it doesn't matter because the formula will find it. We got VLOOKUP and we got MATCH combined together. Try this out. I'm going to drop a link to the blog. If you're looking at this on YouTube, you can, you can go to my blog, you can download the file, you can try it out. If you're already on my blog, there'll be a link right there inside this blog post. Try it out. Get some hands-on experience and really solidify this concept here.